All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the uh, Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. So um, let's uh, get started with our morning analysis. I probably got out of that. I probably shouldn't have got out of my Aussie and Kiwi. I probably jumped the gun there, but it's okay. I, you know, I'm actually more comfortable not being in them at the moment. Um, you know, and and I, I'm still I'm still short the euro from yesterday. Um, you know, my cost average is 112.10 and I'm just sitting in it. It's not a huge position. I'm still in a position in the dollar Swiss, you know, so I don't, I, I've, I've got some long dollar exposure. I just, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, uh, about being, um, short the commodity currencies, especially if the equity markets try to, you know, try to stabilize here. And that's, that's what, that's what my biggest concern is at the moment. All right. So let's talk about the Euro, which is actually really close to its lows today. And we had, um, you know, we had, uh, inflation data come out and it was, uh, it was a little weaker, uh, you know, in Europe, um, both, uh, I think, uh, uh, Spanish and German, uh, CPI, or actually German CPI hasn't come out, <coughs> excuse me. Spanish CPI came in a little worse than expected. Uh, German import prices came down, um, but you can, you can see the Euro's actually near its lows of the day. Now the Euro, we, we talked about a Gartley pattern yesterday and um, here, let's go over to Euro, US dollar. Um, we, we overshot it a little bit. Uh, here, let's go over to the hourly. Okay, we overshot. Um, the, the, the garlic, we actually, you know, went a little bit further than I thought we'd go. I thought we would stop right, um, right here. We did for a while and then overnight we, we, we overshot towards 1280. Uh, but the Euro, I mean, you can see how we're really close to lows and you have to imagine that if the Euro dollar does break through these lows right here, which is also, okay real close to previous resistance. This is where it, you know, the, the Euro starts to get a little bearish. So I'm going to write down 112, I think that's 112.15. Yeah. 112.15. Now we might break it this morning. So I'm going to have to write down a couple numbers, I think. So 112.15, let's go with the running assumption that we're going to break it. Now, if we do break it, you know, how low can we go here? Um, Maybe a move down to 111.75, possible. Okay, so uh, I'll write down 1.1175 and 112.15. Okay, those are two support levels that we're dealing with this morning. And we, and like I said, we might break, we we might break support here, um, you know, shortly. But we'll we'll see. Uh, resistance. Okay, so we're gonna have to take the overnight high. And uh, let's let's do this. Matter of fact, while we're here, let's go over to a four-hour chart. Okay, and you can see this blue line here. Right. That looks like what we're dealing with. And so this, this shows you how important uh, 113 is for resistance, okay? We have obviously a spike high here. Uh, revisit the, you know, uh, the underside of that trend line would be right here. And so while well, the Euro's on its lows right now. Cable's so weak too. I mean, look at how how weak the cable is. We're on our lows. Um, all right, so resistance. I'm going to write down as 113. It's really really critical resistance. We are still in a range environment. All right, let's take a look at the pound. Um, you know, as I was just saying, the pound is so weak here. I mean, the pound's just really struggling to get any type of any type of rally put together and. I mean, if, if I was long the cable, I would be extremely worried. You know, I, I really would. If I was, if I was long the pound dollar, I'd be like, dude, this thing is not, not 
rallying at all. This spike low here, that was uh, after the market on a Friday. So that number was irrelevant, um, but that number is. That number right there is uh, is is actually a low, and that comes in at 151.34. That that low right there came in on a Friday afternoon after the market was closed. It's just MB trading marks data even an hour after the market closes on Friday. So um, anyway, real real key support comes in at 151.35, uh, and we're we're gonna have to run. We're we're gonna have to assume we break through it. Um, so let's go to the daily chart and kind of figure out where we're going to go. And uh, again, just making the assumption that we break, obviously there's some horizontal support here that we need to be mindful of, but let's take a fib from the low to the high. Okay. 618 comes in at 151 or 150, 90. The low here is 150, 90. So this is really key today. And I bet you, just looking at it, looks like we're gonna sever right through those lows and 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 test this 150.90. Does look like it, doesn't it? Okay. Support, 150.90, 151.35, okay two distinct level supports in the cable. Now resistance, I mean, to take the downside pressure off, we have to get back above this 152.50. I mean, th this yellow trend line you can see here, it's, it's, I mean, that was the channel support that's broken. Um, I mean, we at least have to get above that high just so we stop making lower highs. And that comes in at 152.40. So I'm going to write down 152.40. And uh, I'm, I'm about ready to make this into going from range to bearish. So just let you guys know. Um, we may be in a range right now, but it's about ready to turn bearish in my opinion. Uh, the euros two pips from its lows. The cable just hit new. I mean, look, wow. Good night, pound. Nice to know you. Hope you guys aren't low on the cable right now because it's getting hurt. Um, let's go over to the Swissy. So the Swissy, uh, you know, if 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 equities bounce. Uh, back. If equities bounce back, the uh, Swissy will probably bounce back as well. All right, and um, we hit the fifty percent retracement. Okay, overshot a seven eight six retracement. Okay, found some support and are trying to stabilize. Now, I. I venture to guess to, in order to get the Swissy to really move higher, we're going to have to break this right here. So this is our, these are our parameters today. Okay. That comes in at 97.50. And then the support is that spike low, okay, which is the 50% retracement here. Let me get rid of that for real, real quick. <laughs> so that comes in at 96.85 and 97.50. You know, if 97.50 gets taken out, then we're probably going to get a nice little rally here. Ninety-six eighty-five, and we are still on a range. You guys know we have to break above 98.50 in order for this to, you know, go from a range to bullish. All right, let's take a look at um, the dollar yen. 
Okay, so the dollar yen, uh, this is another one you guys got to pay real close attention to because we uh, we had a false breakout up here. We had another, I mean, this is like dollar yen is like pretty, I, I'm, I'm going to actually remove this. I'm going to remove this, okay, for now. And let's look at like a four-hour chart. And let's just mark up, you know, really our range that we're dealing with. Okay. I'm going to keep that right there for now. All right. Support 119, resistance 121.30. And, and again, if the stock market stages a recovery, then we're probably going all right back up here, I would think. Okay. So our range is between 121.30 and basically 119. And I don't know if you really, I, I mean, you, you can, you can try trading inside of this range. Uh, I, I think I would just trade the, um, you know, the extreme range, the extreme fringes of the range is what I would do. But the, okay, here this is actually good because you can actually see this right here. Your resistance today for the dollar yen. What's the high here? One twenty oh two. One twenty oh four. Um, so one twenty point zero five. If if that resistance is broken, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put in us in a range. I know we had this bearish breakdown right here, but really what we've done is we've been just range bound ever since. Um, if we start taking out some of the support, it's going to go back to bearish again. But keep an eye on this 120.05 because if we t if we take out 120.05, then what that suggests to me is that we are you know back going back to the upper end of this range, and equity markets are also being you know very well supported too. Okay. Right now, 119.25 is support. That's the overnight low and also that spike low down here. So 119.25, okay? Um, let's go to the dollar Canadian. So this dollar Canadian, very strong, but we just hit marginal new highs. You see that? Marginal new highs. And I mean, yeah, the dollar Canadian probably is not, you know, a bad short up here. I, I don't know if, you know, you necessarily want to short it, but I'm just saying that if, if the stock market recovers a little bit, um, you know, the dollar Canadian might come off. It, it, this is, I, there's really not a whole lot of resistance right now um, because we're above this 134. But it depends. It depends. Um, you know, if we depends if we, you know, if the if the stock market rolls over again. I think if the stock market rolls over again, then there's not a lot of resistance that's going to stop us. Um, but let's take the high here to the low. See, we're at 127 percent extension right now. 161% extension. I think Paul pointed this out earlier. Is 135.20, and that'd be of this last spike down. 135. So 135.20. If if we really start to rally here, okay. Did you test test? Can you guys hear me? Test. Okay, you guys can't hear me. All right. Somebody said that I didn't have any sound, and I heard. Uh, thank you, everybody, for answering. I um, 
it, in, in my in my headset, I heard you know you know when the USB gets unplugged, you know so you're you know you hear this doot doot you know like something got unplugged. I had to go. Um, Walter said no sound. We're reading your lips. Very good. All right, great, <laughs> great. Um, are is that you under my desk? Interesting. Um, no, when I heard that sound, the USB sound, I went and automatically looked at the comments just to make sure that I wasn't, uh, I didn't get unplugged for any reason. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right, we'll continue on. So the dollar Canadian, um, you know, again, there's not a lot of resistance from where we're at to 135. There really isn't. But, um, you know, this, I, I, I suspect this was like a false breakout. And we'll probably come back down to like 133. 133 was support yesterday. It's support today. Okay. 133. Um, and now it's 134.30, but let's see. I'm going to write down 1.3430. And then um, support is 133. Okay. It is bullish, but I just don't know if I, I don't know if I'd be bullish up here. I'd be bullish down here. You know, some sort of pullback over here would be a more logical place. Maybe even you know down to here. That that even seems more logical. I'm gonna re remove that, but you get what I'm saying. Just I don't know if I'd be chasing the market up here. I guess the point I'm trying to make. Um, okay. Let's go over to the Kiwi. Here's the Kiwi. Now we have a, um, this is, this, I, I, like I said, I, I was short the Kiwi right here from yesterday. Or maybe I was even short from last week right here. I was short from right here, survived that. Did not take profits overnight and just got out for basically a break even. I made a pip, actually. So I already got out. Now, we are in a wedge, and this is consistent lows, lower highs. 64 cents is big. We break above 64 cents in the, in, in the Kiwi, we're going to start squeezing. And, um, if you're short the Kiwi dollar, short commodity currencies in general, I'd be really careful. Okay. Uh, if the Kiwi breaks 64 cents, I would assume that the Aussie's about ready to squeeze. I would assume that the dollar Canadian's about ready to come down. Um, and I mean, if you look at look at where we're at in the in in the Kiwi dollar, I mean, we could we could really start to squeeze back towards like 66, 67 cents. I mean, and we're at 63, 64 cents. So we could probably get a hell of a bounce. Um, so, you know, being short down here is not going to be a great idea. Now we had a, we had a nice reversal, um, uh, candle yesterday. You can see that nice, big, long hammer and an Asian trade that took us all the way down sub 63 cents, but we're now reversing. And like I said, it could get downright, um, downright, uh, uh, squirrely here. You know, if we, if we start to bounce. And I just don't, I'm not comfortable being on the short side. Okay, so 0 0.6400, that is key level of resistance. Because we are bearish right now, but we will turn from bearish to bullish if we break above 64 cents. We're at highs, you know, we're at highs in the Kiwi. Uh, somebody asked me earlier, and I didn't see who asked the answer the question, uh, asked me if I'm long the Aussie New Zealand still. Yes, I am. I'm actually still expecting a move down to 109.50. As much as I don't want to see it go down there, it's still expectations that I have. All right, FYI. All right. Um, the support. Uh, well, today's support's going to be 63 cents or whatever the low is here. What's the spike low? 62.87, but I, I would say I would say any any dip down to 63 cents is going to be very well supported. You know, we wrote down 63 cents yesterday. I mean, we we overshot it by 10 pips in Asia and came back. So, yeah, 63 cents, big support. 
or it will support. It's not huge support, it's just support. All right, let's do the Aussie really quick. We got time. Whoops, here's the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie dollar, very similar. Um, once again, we found support down here. Big support down at uh, 69.35. Is that what the low was here? 37. 35, 69, 35, huge support. And 35, big support down there. And where is resistance? So, you know, here, here's just another example is if, if we break through 70, 40, is that what we wrote down yesterday? Well, we'll just kind of call it 70, 50. If we break through 70, 50, I would not want to be on the short side of the Aussie. Okay. Now we are um, in the Aussie, we're range bound. We're just at the lower end of our range, okay? But yeah, if we break above 70.50, we're probably gonna see a squeeze in the Aussie dollar. I wouldn't wanna be on the short side there. All right, uh, when I come back, uh, Don, he, sh he showed us the, um, uh, the dollar index, uh, another dollar index that works really well. So I'm gonna show it to you guys. We thank Don, who's next level trader. Uh, he's in our chat room and uh, he, uh, brought this to our attention, so I can't wait to show you guys a little bit later or when I come back. I'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks, everyone. All right, traders. Uh, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. It looks like um, German inflation data came in a little worse than expected, a negative 0.2% versus uh, flat. Um, so the euro is coming under a little bit of pressure as a result because German uh, inflation data came in worse than expected. So yeah, we're seeing the Euro sell off just a bit on that news. Um, matter of fact, we're about two pips from the lows. New lows, Euro. Euro, go, Euro, go, because I'm short. Keep on going, please. Um, all right, now remember, you know, as far as the euro goes, we're sitting right on support here at one one twelve fifteen. Uh, break below the uh, break below the one twelve fifteen, and that's going to expose a, a move down to one eleven seventy, I would think. But you see how we're holding it right now? Okay, just a little little heads up. Um, the euro is getting hit against uh, the commodity currencies too, as we had thought would happen. So here's the euro Aussie. Nice sell off there. Euro Canadian. Nice sell off there. Euro New Zealand. Nice sell off there. That's like straight down. Holy guacamole. Um, wow, there goes the euro under some pressure. Boom. Aussie Kiwi <laughs> ripping as the Euro gets crushed. Nice, 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 nice. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye obviously on the Euro uh, as we break through some of that support there. Uh, now I want to take you turn your attention over to the dollar index that uh, this Don had brought this to. Um, uh, my attention, and I, I, I want to say this is a really good. It, look, it looks just like Trading View, right? I mean, it looks almost like a mirror image of Trading View. This is the dollar index. So if you go to investing.com dollar index, and um, it, once you get once you once you're on the dollar index, it looks like that. Okay, you guys see it? Okay, now you you just click over here and expands the chart. There's the dollar index. Really, uh, really nice, nice, uh, clean. Uh, real-time chart. So uh, as far as the dollar index go, this is the exact same, like I said, TradingView, exact same chart as uh, investing.com and tradingview.com. They must use the exact same template. Um, dollar index, well, we can get away with it anyway and look at, look at this uh, live. Resistance comes in at 96.50. You know, I've been looking for a solution. So um, so uh, this is a really, really good uh, uh, solution to the dollar index dilemma that we've had. Again, if you guys haven't seen it, it's at investing.com. 
Uh, Jay says they've completely robbed TradingView. Well, here's the thing, Jay, and I'm, 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 I'll, I'll just tell you, a lot of these companies, TradingView, you know, investing.com, they have the same template. TradingView has just done a better job advertising and getting to you, right? Because they have a community, but it's it's just a, it's a, it's a template that some software company sells. That's all it is. But no, this it, it's this is all the same template. It's it's a, it's that means there's a there's somebody out there that has developed this template and is selling it to TradingView and and uh, investing. It's not you know I, I don't think it's uh, it, it's anything um, unique. Here. Now, what I do think is that um, TradingView has done a good job as far as uh, trying to build some sort of community of traders that no one, you know, you have no idea who they are, which is scary in itself. But, um, but yeah, you know, they're all using the same, they're all using the same charting template. Okay. Um, oh, is it powered by TradingView? Does it say powered by TradingView down here? Wait, hold on. Oh, powered by TradingView. Oh, so it is. It's just the TradingView charts. So it's TradingView's technology. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, John. So it is. It's just TradingView. TradingView's technology, and they just license it over to uh, investing. Investing has their own. That means investing has their own um, uh, data inputs or data providers. So TradingView provides the actual technology. But hey, it's a great alternative for right now, right? Look at the euro. Look at the Canadian. What happened there? Euro new lows, Canadians reversed, Kiwi is firm, Aussie is firm. Ooh, Nelly. Swissy's trying to firm up. I like this. I like this price action. It's good. That's good. Das very good. Stocks are stable. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let, I, hold on really quick. Okay, so let, let's let's just do this really quick. Dollar index resistance ninety six fifty. Ninety six fifty. Ninety six point five zero. We are in a range. Okay. Um, Let's go to the four hour chart here on the dollar index. Hold on really quick. Oh, no, no, that I didn't want to do. Uh, let's remove that. Okay. Shoot. I have to adjust these settings. I forget how I did that. That's all right. I just like it when it goes over to the left, but ah, no. Okay, so the 786 comes in over here. We're not dealing with that right now, but um, that's something that we'll have to be aware of. Yeah, see, I, oh, here we go. Format, labels to the right, that's it. Okay, let's get rid of this. Uh, no, you were supposed to save. <sighs> the labels are supposed to go over to the right doing that. <clears throat> Crap. That's all right. It's no biggie. 
I'll figure it out a little bit later. To, this is not the venue to do it. Um, oh, is it at the extended lines? That's what it is. Got it. Extended lines. That is it. Correct. You guys got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Extended lines. There we go. Why it doesn't default to that? I have no idea. But anyway, okay. So the 786 is going to be a big deal. But right now, um, just a just a move up to this resistance will be a, what we need to pay attention to. So 96.50 is going to be key resistance. Support uh, today is going to be at 95.83. So we'll just call it 95.80. There you go. Okay, uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the peso. And let's take a look at the Norwegian Krona and Swedish Krona. So the peso, and, and I want you to treat the peso a little differently. Um, and, and, and the reason why I say keep it treated a little differently is because it is acting very much inverse of what the dollar is doing everywhere else. Um, the reason why is because of risk aversion and risk appetite. If the market continues to rally, the equity markets um, push off these lows, the peso should probably drop down towards the support. So just keep that in mind. It's it's um, you know we're 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 really moving more with risk aversion and risk appetite regarding the peso. Um, because the euro peso is moving um, uh, you know in that in that fashion as well so I don't know if there's anything to do with the peso right at this very moment in time though I don't know if there's anything to really trade um, let's take a look at the Norwegian Krona now the Norwegian Krona, do we just hit the 161% extension of that range? We did, came really close. So check this out. All right. US dollar Norwegian Krona is gonna find some support down at 840. That's probably the place you wanna be long. US dollar Norwegian Krona support 8.4000. That's going to be key support resistance, 161% extension, which is up here, 860, 862, 8.62, and this is um, this is in a bullish um, bullish trend. But like I said, this is how you want to play. Remember yesterday, we were here, and I'm like, okay, you want to be a buyer as you drop down to 840, which is the breakout point. For those of you that can trade the Norwegian Krona, so now that we've dropped, you want to get all the way down to 840 if you can get it, and be long there. That's that's the place to be on the to be on the long side. All right, Swedish Krona. A whole lot of nothing going on. There's nothing to do here. Nothing exciting. Okay. This is your bias chart. It is done. And like I said, and I'm gonna, I'm, I want to um, reiterate. Watch these commodity currencies. Look at the dollar Canadian peel away. Okay, the 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 dollar Canadian may be bullish. The Kiwi may be bearish, but they are, they're those those are threatening to go into a range environment, in my opinion. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> let me grab a drink. This one's spiked.